people understand what it means to have an inclusive conversation and focus on diversity within companies, but what does it mean when you're talking about product and product development? What does it mean to create products that are diverse and inclusive? We want everyone to feel like they were thought of in the product design process, and when they pick up a product, whether it's a phone, a camera, a computer, or any other type of product outside of tech, you want them to feel like, oh, this was made with me in mind, right? And in order to do that, you really need to look at the entire product design process, whether it's the ideation phase, when you're doing research, um, when you're doing user testing, or beyond, right? Like there are many other places you could bring it in. It's thinking about who else do I need to have at the table and how is that going to affect the trajectory of the product design process. Uh, I can give you two quick examples. The first one is um, we worked on our sensors um, and the sensors are in things like our phones and our, our pixel books and laptops. Um, we wanted to make sure that everyone felt like they were seen and represented accurately and beautifully. And so we worked to make sure that all skin tones, no matter how light or how dark you are, you would be really beautifully represented. And so we do, um, we call it dog fooding, but test user testing across multiple dimensions of diversity, including race, right, and skin tone, um, to make sure that the end product is something where people pick it up and they are able to be seen. Um, the second example would be our Google Assistant, so the kind of voice assistant that helps throughout products. Uh, we worked to make sure that before it launched, it wasn't going to say anything offensive, but also that we proactively added um, cultural moments to it, right? So the way we did that was bringing a bunch of different, um, what we call employee resource groups, so different Googlers from different backgrounds together, and they were the ones who helped us what we call stress test, or test the product and find the, the things that need to be changed that could be alienating or offensive, and take those out before it launched. It must be very difficult though, because if you just take Google alone, it is such a large global technology company. What's the biggest challenge uh, in your role and for your team? Making sure that we start as early as possible. Obviously, tech moves very quickly and teams move very quickly. So it's really about isolating those kind of key points, call them the key inflection points in the process, and then making sure that we have the kind of the right group to help um, support them. And so we've actually built um, a team of what we call inclusion champions, who are Googlers who volunteer to help teams bring that inclusive lens. And we're able to kind of customize what groups help certain product teams so they're getting those voices at the table. I think. The other challenge is making sure that because this is kind of a newer concept, right, people typically talk about diversity inclusion as it relates to culture and representation. We're kind of expanding that to talk about product. And so um, making sure that they understand um, kind of the three things that they can do or the one thing that they can do um, and empowering them to kind of own that in the process um, because they are the ones who own product management, engineering, marketing, et cetera. So really kind of putting the onus on them, but empowering them with the right resources. Where do you see the future of product inclusiveness going? You know, no matter what industry you're in, if you're creating a product or service, you'll actually look at the process it takes from all the way from when you have an idea to when it launches and those key points in between, and keep asking who else, right? And you, you will have a commitment that you um, will bring those people into the center, right? Those at the margins into the center, and not only do that, but really uplift them um, so that you're really creating better products and services for all, right? So when you do start to think about an underrepresented user, um, many times the outcome or the solution you find have knock on effects for everyone, right? So when you think about someone with a disability, if you have someone who's holding groceries, for example, that's a temporary disability, right? Um, and so I think that there's a what we call a curved cut effect. When you think about an underrepresented user, usually the solution is going to be better for everyone. And that's what I hope people start to understand and they start to kind of implement that.